The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hey everybody, it's Jeff Schwert, the founder of Really.ai. We've got a really special fall 2023 features and updates call for you. Basically a little quarterly update call that we've been doing um, as we've launched the product and, and really starting to bring out some uh, great reseller agencies, small business subscribers that are, that are seeing some great success in the Revealy.ai platform, whether you be a user or, or a reseller. And we've made some really great strides over the last uh, couple months through the summer and, and getting into the fall here. Um, to, we wanted to share kind of what we've updated and changed and tweaked in the software. I know there's some of you on the call that I can see right now that have been with us from the beginning. Um, some of us have sent in some inputs and things like that. So we want to show you what we've been doing you know, under the hood, things that we've released recently. Uh, so we wanted to kind of just put it all into, into one quick uh, webinar and, and overview today to show you some of the benefits of what the updates at Revealy.ai have done for, for some of our users and then walk you through at both the agency and then the location level, uh, depending on what kind of subscriber you are of the software. So before I get started, just give me a one or a yes in the chat for the GoToWebinar. Um, that I know that you guys can see the screen, hear me, all that good stuff, and then we'll, uh, we'll kick this call right off. Awesome. All right. Got it coming in. So we are good to go um, from there. So before we get started, a lot of people tend to show up for these, you know, a few minutes past the top of the hour. So I want to also um, tell you guys that there are some folks that are seeing some great success with Revealy.ai that are branded the software that are trying to figure out how do they generate reviews for the Google Business Profile. Um, so we released uh, a couple weeks ago, like a week or two ago, a case study of a business that has generated 18 reviews um, in their first 10 days in the platform. And we're going to show you kind of where they were just a couple of days ago last Friday, but um, they're doing really, really well with it. They've got some really powerful results where, you know, over their first uh, 10 days, they were sending about 10 to 15 feedback requests a day. So they sent out 155 feedback requests to new clients. These um, were sent to daily new customers that were in need of a, of a service. Um, and it's pretty time sensitive. So of those 155 feedback requests that they sent out using our process, uh, 96 of them replied, right? So basically... 60, a little over 60%, um, that generate 18 new online reviews. They were seeing one to two new reviews per day. Um, but really I thought was important was in that 10 day period, they saw about a 10% growth rate from, from when they started. They went from 184 to 202 reviews or something like that, um, which was, I thought was, was quite awesome and impressive, maybe a little bit higher than that 10%. You can see that like right here, 18 new reviews since they joined the software, 62% response rate. And you can see that they're also, um, they go through and every other day or every day or so, they respond to all the new reviews that come in right from our dashboard. Some of the key factors that this business used that you guys can use with any clients is that they leverage the technology that's already built into Revealy.ai. So instead of relying for each person to go out there and ask um, for the review or put them on, on the kiosk page, they automate it using um, the API or what's known as a, as a web hook where they basically connected us to their CRM. Um, because we use SMS, they saw a really high response rate, 61, 62%. Um, and they were asking them, like, hey, look, we're gonna send you um, a feedback request. Would you mind filling it out? And then we had an 18% response to review rate for the happy customers were promptly um, able to use the AI to help them draft or edit a post. And a lot of that came with some of the updates and things that we put into the system. Um, and all, all this is organic. It's real um, and it doesn't put the account owner at risk at all with uh, like Google Business Profile because they're, they're not mass updating lists and, and sending the reviews. Um, they're literally asking every single customer and it's organic over you know hours during the day when those jobs have been completed. So some key takeaways for this is that, yeah, they were, gener they were able to generate 18 new reviews. So, you know, dozen and a half new reviews in the first week and a half. Um, so you figure they're probably generating, you know, 10 every single week. Uh, it's hands off, right? So it's great for them with that. Um, they do boast high customer feedback um, to online review rate because of the process and the high touch scenario. And then they can use um, our system to quickly respond to new reviews um, with the AI assisted response, which is really powerful to generate these fresh reviews on Google. Now we talked about being 155. That was about a week and a half ago. See, they've generated now um, as we wrapped up last month, the feedback, they sent out 250 requests and about 154 people actually responded. And since the original case study, they've brought in 10 more reviews. 
So they're constantly doing this. As a matter of fact, I'm assuming, uh, you know, if I log back in on Friday, you've got another couple of days, this number might even be higher, right? So this system works. Everything that we show you of what we're doing and implementing into Reviewly.ai, if you just put it into play if for your business, if you put it into play for your clients' businesses and you have them follow the process, it does work, all right? So some Q3 feature releases, and this is at the reseller level. So if you're um, just a, a small business and you're on the a call, or you're watching the replay of this on, on YouTube or on our website or anything like that, these are for our, our resellers. So just take a moment, you know, we're going to talk a little bit to our reseller specifically of things that we've done to make it easier for you. Um, at the end of July, or sorry, at the end of August going into September, uh, Tulio. Uh, as a reseller, you guys know, had some updates and things that they did for A to P 10 DLC campaigns. What does it mean in layman's terms? Basically, it's a legal requirement for you to register, you know, what you're going to be sending um, or your, what your clients are going to be sending on behalf. Now, if you're a location, we already do that at Reviewly for you. Um, and we actually made it very easy for a lot of the folks that are on this call to go through the process and I created a training. So we have some automated campaign assignments and things that we do that I want to walk everybody through real quick to show you kind of where to go through this training. Um, we identified a few folks that you know, may need a little bit of help. So I'm going to put this in the, in the webinar and also be in, in the replay links from there. But when we send it out, oops, it's in there. Let me just put it into the chat for the webinar for everybody. It doesn't want to send the webinar. Give me one second. There you go. All right, send everybody. You can open up this link. So if, if you're an agency, this is where you go as your as your login page, right? This is our training page of the software. We tell you to bookmark it. Um, some folks get lost, and then we, it's also linked in our knowledge base. When you log in for the first time, I'm gonna skip the whole Twilio setup from there, but there's a, a 10 minute video on, on how to do that. I walk you through it over the shoulder to go through everything. After that, you need to go through the initial A to P campaign. Okay, this is basically the automation from our system, and you need to do what's known as a brand registration. If you're confused about any of that, don't worry about it right now. Um, if you're a business, you don't have to do it. If you're if you're an agency or if you're a reseller, this is the first page that you go through, and I walk you through this. What's really key about this is if you if you've been an agency for a while, if you've done anything with Twilio, a lot of people made it sound like this was difficult, complicated, and they tried to scare you. OK, um, just because you know, it's, it's you're registering a company and, and, and the brand and it's not that difficult if you just follow the steps. So if you watch these videos, I walk you through each and every one of these steps. Um, one of the key factors here on this video is and I want to make sure that I point this out. So I'll bring up the slide here uh, when you go through the, the Twilio requirements for ADP 10 DLC. As an agency, you are on behalf of your clients, you're basically registering a brand that you're helping to manage these locations. So you're going to need to put in your business under the brand and your business EIN, your social security number or your electronic identification number for the business, okay? Um, if you do it as a personal account, personal brand for yourself and you use your social security number instead of the EIN, the electronic identification number that you've been given when you created your business, you are most likely going to be denied when you get to the next step, which is going to be the campaign. Okay. So there are some key things that you do need to pay attention to this. So go ahead and watch the videos. Again, it's not difficult. I walk you through it. In fact, this took me only about three total business days. I think I started on a Thursday or a Friday and by Monday afternoon I was approved. Um, so it, it actually goes pretty quick and I did it right after everything changed to expect the longest possible delay and it only took just a short period of time. The PDF that you guys see right here on this button on the training page, it'll load here in just a second. This is the exact settings. These are the exact settings. These are the exact descriptions, the messages and the, everything you're going to put into Twilio, I'm giving you that. How do I know that this works? I've had it approved multiple times for our company, for our agency as well that I run, and then how to complete the entire thing and how to set it up inside of your system. Now, one of the key things is that when you're done, you want to go in, you've got your connected brand, your connected message service, and you get everything approved. There's one spot 
in the software that some of the folks that are agencies that, that missed out on this. As a matter of fact, we identified and reached out to some of you guys this morning before this call. We implemented automated, camp, automated campaign assignments. How are we able to do that? Well, if all of your campaigns are using the exact same messaging and the only change is basically the business name and the person that's doing the outreach, this is a very approvable message and you could put everybody's going into the same message. Now they can update it and tweak it just a little bit, but this is the messages that are going to go out. And we're not doing any cold outreach. You guys are not doing anything marketing wise. You're literally asking for customer feedback. This is customer care type stuff. So when you go in, if you haven't done this already, I'm logged into a, a demo agency account here. If you go into your info, you can see that you have your Twilio SID, your Twilio token, and then you also have your campaign messaging ID. When you put this in, if you put your campaign messaging ID, this is going to be key. For every single new business that comes in, they will automatically be put into your Twilio brand, your Twilio campaign, and we will automatically assign them to that campaign. So once you're approved, you're good. All your folks will be able to go through and set up. So if you have any questions, our support team can help you with that. But it should be pretty simple where if you go through and you watch those you know, 20 minutes of videos, you take about you know, 15, 20 minutes of implementation. Now we've automated that process and you won't have to do this for every single one of your customers. It works. Okay. If you are a small business and you're watching this, you don't need to do any of this. We've already done it for you. But this is us just walking through for the resellers. For the WhatsApp integration. So we have WhatsApp through Twilio. Um, this is a longer process. So if you are outside the U.S. and you have or you have clients that are outside the U.S., you want to use WhatsApp. If I log into the dashboard, and let me just let me log into my dashboard here. I go to my locations. You can see that I have numbers, right? And then you see WhatsApp number in here. So you would claim a number. You're going to go through the normal process, and then our support team will send you the link to the information to sign up with, with WhatsApp. I'm not going to go through that today. Um, it's about a two to four week process. Um, if you're a business that would like to use WhatsApp, let our support staff know as well. Um, but that is a key factor in our process and, and what we've added in there. I've had it approved. We've run it through. It works just like um, normal to the text message, except for it only goes to Twilio. Some key things that you need to know is that uh, – our, our, our staff will work with you. Um, it needs to be approved through Meta, not Twilio. So this is going to be a Facebook Meta um, WhatsApp deal because um, Meta, who also owns Facebook, owns WhatsApp. And the process is very um, you know, detailed. And they expect you to make sure that like you are verified that you are either the business owner um, or that you have the ability and the rights to send a message as that business is, as you can, you know, imagine um you know the security that they want to go through so it, it is not fast um it is external to twilio but we do have the integration done and you guys are able to set that up if you're looking to do an integration outside um of the us and you want to use whatsapp instead of direct text messaging all right uh, mike said thanks for nailing this for the twilio you're welcome mike um all right multi-language support so we've had some folks uh that have asked like you know, Hey, you, are you able to send messages in our language? Can you do this, whether it be like Danish or Spanish or, or things like that? Um, so I'm going to show you guys how you can set this up. So if you are outside the U.S. and you want to go in and you want to set up your information here, we released uh, some updates and, and videos on that. You can see inside of I go in to set up your information underneath my agency level account, my reseller level account. You've got language right here. This is the default language in the system is English because um, we started in the U.S., obviously. But if you go through, you can see that we've got almost a dozen different languages that are similar. We basically picked out the most popular ones um, that you guys can use. This would be the default language from there. You do have the ability to change the language in different locations, but this is a default language in all of the individual accounts. If you have any questions with that, let our support staff know. They can set it up, but this is where you're going to go. You're going to do it at your level. For anybody that sets that up, what does it change? It changes all of the messaging to include the AI draft inside of all the text messaging, right? So change the language, 
go through it. And if you have any questions, just let our staff know and, and they'll walk you through that process. In addition to that, we released the password reset from the reseller dashboard. We had a couple of folks that said, hey, my, my people can't get in. Can you know, how do I how do I log in or, or change your password for them um, or they got locked out? All you need to do is you go to the action tab or the action column right here underneath your sample business name and you're just going to put in their password and you could update it from there. Minor feature update, but we had a couple of folks that had some issues letting their people in um, or they wanted to change it from there. All right. Those are all the reseller updates for all the folks that are resellers. Now, for all of our small business users or our resellers that have clients, these are all the business location updates that we've made over the last quarter. One of the things that we wanted to make sure of is that like we knew what was going on and we were keeping track of all of the, of the records. So now what we have, if we have the, the ability to display the contact record in all historical data. This came with some you know, questions and things from some of our clients where they're asking you know, what was happening. And I'm sure you guys as, as resellers are going to have questions um, from your clients as well. So I'm going to log into my, my sample business name account here. And you can see that you know I've got a couple different things that have been sent out. We were just testing a couple of things um, from there. If I want to go into contact record, I want to see everything that happened under this contact record. So let's say that, hey, you know, somebody didn't reply or we can't, what happened here, you know, get the contact name and the person's information and you just click on the number, right, that's, that's sending that contact information. And now you can see everything that's happened. Now, this number happens to also be an agent when we were testing a couple other things, but like every bit of data, every message that's gone out, everything that's been sent out is inside of this contact record inside of the account. This allows you to have some more control or some visibility. Um, if you need to go in there and not say debug, but like just you know help them figure out what's going on. Because I've had some folks that you know, they send us a couple of things and, and we had to dig into it. So now we just display all that contact record data by logging in, clicking the contact page and going from there. In addition to that, this is a feature that we knew that was gonna be needed and, and coming out, is you now have the ability to set the feedback request intervals and the delays. So let me show you where those are at, what those actually do. So I've been teaching this and doing the demos on these for a while. But when you log into a location, go to feedback settings here, and you've got your request settings on the bottom left hand side. So a lot of folks like to use the kiosk page, it's like a check in page, um, if you will, or you have them type in a keyword to the number. Obviously, I don't have a number for, for this business at the moment. And then you can see the feedback request delay. So this determines whether you're going to send it immediately, if you're not going to send it at all, or the delay, right? This is if you're a check-in or, hey, we're going to send you feedback after we leave or anything like that, or if you're running the API. So if you are adding customers in through an upload or an automated customer API, that trigger sequence, this will set the delay from when that contact record is added into the system. And then after the contact is added into the system, how long before we attempt to send the first request, okay? Should be quick and easy and, and on how that makes sense. In addition to that, we have businesses that, you know, you might go to your chiropractor twice in a month or you get your pets groomed every week. Um, or maybe you have folks like a dental office that come on a regular basis. And then you have the one-off businesses, right? So you have a request interval setting here right this is the minimum time before re-adding a contact back into the feedback sequence so a lot of folks say recommend maybe only send once depending on your business type right from there send every time and this again is whether they're added manually whether added through uh, api or they're added through a list or you can set a 30 60 90 or a six month delay at 180 days um, from there and this will prevent Somebody can, from getting the feedback request multiple times in a short span of time um, without you know, having to bug them over and, and over again. So that's something that you can set up that's in there. We just click the update and now those settings are updated from there. All right. Now, on to the two bigger ones. Okay. We've been testing a lot of things with AI um, drafts and, and we've had some great feedbacks from some of our agencies and, and, and some of our, our users um, from there. We now have the ability to have the instant AI draft happen immediately as upon feedback as well as a 24 hour follow up. I'm going to show you what that looks like after I show you where you can turn that on um, in the dashboard because we're already there inside of the software. 
So inside of the software, if you go to feedback settings, you have positive replies, right? This is where we're going to basically ask for um, the feedback. And this is the initial message that goes out. Would you mind leaving us a Google review link? And it, it links right to their Google business profile. You should be well aware of this. It's automatically set up out of the box. Now, if you have customers that you've been using, we did not turn this on. For all new accounts, this will be turned to on, okay? For all the folks that you already have in the system, we didn't adjust any settings for you. So you have the ability now to go through and offer an instant AI draft. I'm gonna show you what that looks like in a second. And then you also have the ability, this text just changed slightly. You have a 24 AI draft follow-up. I'm gonna log on to the keynote and, and walk you guys through that right now. Okay, so this is a major release, right? This is a major release to our AI assisted draft. And it's an update that we've made based on some testing. And we knew this was gonna be a request once we got started. Um, a lot of folks wanted to get that AI to come out right away. So this is how the positive feedback flow works. You request feedback, the customer responds with a four or a five, they're down the positive path, right? They're instantly sent a review link. What we used to do is we used to wait before we asked for the AI assisted draft. What we do now is we have the ability to activate the AI the minute they leave positive feedback to help get even more reviews posted. Again, it's a setting that you can turn, turn on or turn off depending on what you want and it's built into our proven rapid reviews process. So this is a moving company that we use as an example, um, you know, valuable feedback. Jeff in this case leaves a five. Hey, that is great to hear. Would you mind leaving us a Google review, right? And immediately, because I have the AI assisted draft come out instantly, immediately after that review link is dropped, we send them a second message. If you'd like an AI assisted review recommendation to help you get started, reply with yes or a Y, right? Or then N or no, if not, right? From there. Now, what does that do? If I click on Y, the customer can now easily copy and paste and edit this review or even ask for an additional review draft. Why do we do this? Well, a lot of folks, you know, have that problem of trying to figure out what they're going to write right away. We've engaged them right there on the spot. They've given us feedback. Now, if they click on why or yes, they're taking micro commitments, small steps to help generate a review for that business. Again, you can turn this on or turn this off at your business location or for your client's locations from there. And we instruct them right there, tap and hold the review above to copy and paste the draft into your Google. And then if they'd like another suggestion, they can reply with a UI or yes. So in this case, let's say that they don't respond after this, right? They can ask for up to three in this case right here, but let's say that they don't click on the review link. They do not click on this review link in the text message after 24 hours, if this is turned on, we send them a follow-up, okay? This message is built very specifically because a lot of individuals will delete their text message or they'll forget, or they don't wanna scroll higher to go get the link. So we immediately say, hey, look, we noticed that you have not clicked to leave us a review yet at, and we give them the link to the Google business profile, okay? Would you like an AI assisted review to help you get started? And they get the why or the yes from there. So this is the message only comes out if the customer responds to us, but doesn't click the link. It doesn't matter if they ask for an AI draft or not. It matters only if they click the link and if they have not clicked the link, if you've turned this on, this message will go out. They can request up to three AI draft recommendations or suggested reviews to help them get started with that business. And then any time in this process over that 24 hour period, once the review link is clicked, the system no longer follows up, okay? So your clients or your customers of your business don't have to worry about us constantly sending the message. The minute they click the review link, it's over. That's it, it no longer follows up. And after that 24 hour period, they don't do anything. We no longer follow up either because you're not going to get them to do anything. We've, we've tested this, okay? What we've done with this process, we've improved to help solve the common reasons why people don't leave a review. 22% said that they do not know what to write about a business. I liken this to like when you ask somebody for a letter of recommendation, they're happy with you. What do they like? The professor, the business that used to work with letter of recommendation for a better job. They say, send me a draft. If I like it, I'll just sign off on it. If not, I'll make some tweaks and go from there. And then 32% said, yeah, I'll give you feedback. I just don't have the time to write the review. 
we're helping to solve the common problem. And half the folks that don't leave a review have said that these are the reasons why we made it easier for them. All right. In addition to that, another major feature that we re released over the last couple of weeks is the multi-location management or sub-admin user support, right? Underneath the admin level of the account. So what does this mean? When we come to the, the sub-user and, and multi-location setup here, what we're doing is we're allowing as a reseller to group locations underneath your account. If you're a multi-location business, you're going to see all of your locations and you'll be able to input a sub-user right here, okay? And there's an update and there's a training video on this. So think of like a general manager that manages three locations, right? So they three roofing locations across the valley or three chiropractic offices, three restaurants, 10 locations. We can manage you know, as many that you want, but you want to give somebody access to only the locations that you want them to see. So if you sell a multi-location package, you can give a general manager, right? So let's just go GM, we'll go general man, oops, oh. manager at really AI, the email doesn't exist. Let's give them five, five as a number. Set that up, and I just create a sub user from here. Now, that sub user, as you can see in this case, has zero locations assigned to them. So as you go through, you've got Jeff at Revealy.demo, uh, it's one person, he's got two locations assigned. Um, I can log in as Jeff right now and he will see his two locations, right? And I can also log back up as the account admin. I can go back into my account admin from here. Um, and you can see that I've got four locations, but Jeff, see so I've four locations here, but Jeff can only use two, all right? So the general manager, the GM here, I wanna give him access to, let's just say these three locations. I just select those three locations, right? I can assign. And now instantly, I've got my three locations that I'm assigned to. From here, I can add or remove. Um, if I go log in as this general manager for these locations, you can see that they have the ability, they can create a location based off the subscription plans that are set up underneath. Okay, so usually they can't do anything with the sub users and that's all they can really do. They can go, they can log in, they can activate, they can delete, basically anything that you can use for yourself as a location manager, as a reseller, but they can't do anything else other than sign out. They can't adjust your subscriptions or anything like that, um, but they do have the ability to create and remove locations. So you can see that they can go in, they can impersonate, they can go in and do the normal day-to-day -day operations from there, and then they can go and go back to the account admin and set up from there. Pretty simple, pretty clean and easy that you can use as an agency. If you're a business that has multiple locations, obviously our team's gonna work with you to set this up for each and every one of those locations from there. All right, that's a sub-user, multi-locations, right? You now have the ability when somebody sells, um, you know, company that has two, three, five, 10, 200 locations, you can block them all together. You can give your regional manager, you can give them access to it. They can log to each and every one of those as they go from there. So those are the big things that we've gone through, right? We've done a lot of updates um, over the last quarter and, and we want to kind of recap it all instead of doing one-offs. We've done videos and we've done releases onto our knowledge base, our FAQs. We're posting them to our, our pages and our socials as we start to expand those out. Um, so make sure that you do go out there and, and follow us and, and, and go through because um, we'll do, we will continue to release updates and give you guys everything that we have. And you know, we do update all of our stuff on a regular basis, but we wanted to do just an overall summary of what happened in, in, in Q3 as we went into fall of 2023 to make it even faster and easier to get those AI assisted reviews posted online, how to make it easier for those businesses. And, and we're selling this on, on a daily basis ourselves. And you guys should be doing this as well. If you're an agency, um, if you're a business, as you saw from the case study, if you engage with your customers on a day-to-day -day basis, asking them for feedback, you can get some really amazing reviews. A couple of questions have come in and been answered. Um, and then uh, Michael said, uh, can you uh, send me the link to the Google Drive with the PowerPoint in it, please? Michael, it's in, uh, it's actually in the training area from there and our support staff can get it. I can't grab it on the call for you, but Michael, I'll send this uh, link direct to you 
as well, and it's on this page. Um, so you have it. And Michael, actually, uh, you're one of the folks that we need to get your campaign SID set up with, I think, um, based on a, a, the call and the meeting that we had this morning with, with all of the staff from there. So if you have any questions, type it a Q in the chat right now. Um, Mike has a question. I'll, if you have any questions, type it a Q and I'll get to it as, after I answer Mike's. Um, this is your time to ask the founder of the software about being a location or a reseller agency, how you can use this to benefit your customers to generate more reviews for your clients as an agency to help them generate more reviews um, from there. So uh, my question, we uh, we have an agency, uh, as if as an agency we have a multiple location new client, do we just request from uh, it from you guys? Mike, it's actually active in your account already. If you log into your account as a reseller agency, because that's what the account that I'm showing you guys right here, you will see this sub user tab already active in your account um as you guys go so and then uh michael says uh yeah your campaign messaging id sorry michael that's the one that yeah sorry yeah, that's what i meant um from there all right uh as we go and then let me pull up my slide deck again make sure you guys have everything you need cool and then julian has a question how are you pricing uh multi-location accounts so julian uh for us and we and i talk about this for the agency training so you're an agency and obviously this, this is going to be a public uh facing webinar what we do is we have our normal pricing uh, from there and it makes sense for any software SaaS, enterprise level account um julian as a reseller you do have the option to talk to our support or jump on some of our private private agency only training calls from there big picture is it depends on volume OK, um, if it's, a, it's just a handful of clients, less than five or six, normally it's about the same price. Maybe they get a little bit of discount when you start talking, you know, 50, 100, 200 location accounts. Um, I'm meeting someone later that has like 2000 locations, um, you know, potentially that they work with. So there's there's a there's a number there that you need to, to make sense um, for them. And um, I can talk about that when you have something like that on, on the line of what that pricing looks like. Just ask our support staff and we can jump on um, from there. But, you know, it, logic really plays. And I've sold these before to, to several hundreds of locations, not specifically out of review, out of review yet, because um, this re this just got released about a week or two ago um, before we so we can do this update call. But the, the biggest thing here with that is when you get into, you know, multi-location management, really the first couple are all about the same. It's when you start getting the bulk, that number becomes uh, pretty high monthly and, and on a quarterly basis for them. And it becomes, you know, cost prohibitive. So you need to make sure that the cost value is there for both you and, and for them. So, um, Frankie, great question. What's the highest amount that I can charge for my services? It's what the market can bear. What's the value that you can bring, right? What's the... And I, and I teach that in some of the agency training and stuff as well. Um, so that's so that, you know, as we go through the agency specific trainings, I can walk you through that. But really, what is the value? What is the ROI that you can bring to your clients um, as you guys go from there? So, all right. With that being said, it's the fall 2023 features and updates. It's a wrap. Um, if you're watching this video on the replay on YouTube channel or, or what we've got um, and, and you're seeing this for a time and you, and you don't know what Reviewly.ai is, go to our website. Right, go to reviewly.ai. It's down the bottom left hand side of the slide. You'll see that as of right now of this recording, if you go to reviewly.ai, you can get started for free as a small business, test this out a little bit, or watch the demo and talk to either myself or one of our staff members that's an expert, a reputation expert, that can show you how you can make this work um, for yourself. If you're a reseller, go to the to the reseller page right here and you know go through the process and get a personalized demo and, and we'll walk you through we have a couple of different options that we can show you guys as you go in but really just go through and and try us out right and get in um to reviewly.ai for yourself or for your agency or for your business because we do boast some impressive results for our clients that are actually using the system on a day-to-day -day basis um frankie uh great question how do you handle logistics for 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 many clients so what we do is we we take a a single point of contact, chief of marketing, um, and make that person the head person that we only speak to um, at that company. If you have multiple clients, I've done this before, um, and you work with them to help them be educated on the product. Our product is super simple. Um, it's very streamlined, and you know a fifth grader could log in here and, and start to use our software. So you bring them up to speed on it, and then you have them either train the individual locations or set up. So um, that's if you have many locations, right? If you have, if you're bringing in a single location, you're charging them a couple hundred bucks for the year or whatever it is, you're going to want to like help them come on board. But again, our system is very intuitive and easy for any of those folks.
that come into the software and go through. It's very self-service based. But when you start talking about many locations and sub-users and general managers and things like that, let our staff know if you have something like that and the support once you, you are close to that deal being done and, and they can help you um, with some of those questions as well. So that wraps it up for the fall 2023 featured update webinar. Um, my name is Jeff Short. I'm the founder of Reviewly.ai. To go ahead and get started, understand a little bit more about what we do, go through a personalized demo with myself or one of our staff, go to Reviewly.ai, book your demo, and we look forward to having you as a Reviewly.ai member. Take care, and we'll see you guys on the next call. Bye-bye.